Each year, more than 130,000 children are adopted. But what happens if the child does not bond with the family? Anita Tadaldi recently blogged about her family's heartbreaking experience. We're going to talk to her in a moment. But first, today, national correspondent Natalie Morales has Anita's story. And by the way, Anita asked us to protect the identity of Baby D and her husband, who serves in the military. The first time I considered giving up D, I was lying alone in bed. I ran to D's room afraid that he was already gone. But he was there, sucking his thumb and breathing evenly. I caressed his cheek with two fingers and exhaled. Tell me about the very first day you got that phone call and told you, we have a child. We were just overjoyed. We had pictures and I remember I would look at the picture with my kids. As with any adoption, Anita and her family were thoroughly screened and they went through counseling to help make D a part of their family. He had been found by the side of a road, but the doctor estimated he was younger than one year. D lacked strength in his legs and had a completely flat head from lying in a crib so many hours a day. But the physical or developmental issues weren't the real problem. Five or six months after his arrival, I knew that D wasn't attaching. I tried very hard, maybe even harder than I would with my biological children to find a connection. And I didn't feel that we were establishing that connection. After 18 months of trying to bond with D, Anita came to a heartbreaking realization. My thoughts and emotions were disjointed and came in waves. One moment I was determined to keep D because I loved him. An instant later, I realized that I wasn't the parent I know I could be and that I should place Dee with a better family, with a better mother. She chose to terminate the adoption and she began looking for his new family. I explained to him that he'd been joining his new family and that we loved him very much, that he had done nothing wrong. In our last moments together, I stared into his eyes and told him that I loved him and that I tried to do my best. Do you feel like you failed him? I'm not sure that I failed him. I loved him and I tried my best. In that respect, I didn't fail him. He deserves the best life he could possibly have. I wish I could have been the one to give him that life. That was NBC's Natalie Morales. Anita Tadaldi is with us now, along with Adam Pertman, executive director of the Evan B. Donaldson Adoption Institute, and Lisa Belkin, columnist for the New York Times Magazine. Good morning to all of you. Anita, uh, it's a heartbreaking story. A and when you said in that piece that you just weren't connecting with D, can, can you explain that a little more? What were the signs that there was no connection here? Sure, I think it was um, both ways that the child D wasn't connecting with us. And uh, at the same time, while I was seeking help with uh, a therapist, a social worker, while I was trying to establish a connection and did some attachment therapy, I also realized that on my part, there was a, a difference. I also had a hard time bonding with him. And when you say bonding, though, there was obviously affection. You say that you loved D, even though you weren't bonding with D. And I think some people might need a little explanation on that. Sure, I loved him and, and I cared deeply for him. I tried to do the same exact thing that I did with my biological children. But over time, it became clear that our family maybe wasn't a good match for him, that we weren't able to meet some of his needs. And, and the emotions you say came in waves. You, you thought, well, I should stick this out at one moment. No, we should find a better solution in another. Was there one specific incident that, that kind of turned the corner for you? I don't think there was one specific incident. I sought help uh, early on in the process, and I uh, spoke with a social worker who was involved with the uh, adoption and then with a therapist. So I came to this conclusion over time. Adam, uh, well, I want to make it clear you were not involved in this adoption, no. but th this is not the happily ever after story that we hope adoptions have. Right. How often does something like this happen where there isn't a bond? Mercifully, not very often. Um, it ha it, this happens in biological family formation. Someone actually downstairs, as I was preparing, told me about her sister who took a long time to bond with her biological kid. Right. It happens, and the one message we shouldn't take away from this is that this is, you know, adoption is a rental where you try it out. 
it's not, it's permanent, it's loving, and it's like every other family, but that doesn't always work. From, from the adoption agency point of view, is this the outcome you would rather see? W would you favor someone like Anita sticking with it for consistency for that child or finding a better match for the long-term betterment of that child? How do you come down on that? Well, the Donaldson Institute is a research organization, not an agency, okay. so I don't have to make these decisions. From a practice point of view, you want what's in the best interests of the child. I, I can't speak to the intimacies of this, this uh, one episode because I don't know them well enough. In general, you give it all you've got for as long as you can, and in most cases, people sometimes take years to bond with their kids, especially if they're from tough circumstances, but you cannot know in one case. Lisa, I know this story generated a lot of comment, and, and I want to be honest, not a lot of it, uh, there was a lot of it that was not positive. Yeah. A lot of negative comments directed toward Anita. Were you surprised by that? I was not completely surprised. Anita was hesitant about writing this. She had been a blogger for the Motherload blog on other subjects, and this came up in our getting to know each other, and it took months before she wanted to write about it. I spent a lot of time saying, are you sure you want to write about right. it? Because it's a hot topic. And the point was not to say, look, this happens all the time and to frighten people away. But the point was to say this happens sometimes and knowing about that going in, more information is better. And, and Anita, to the people who have judged you harshly at times, how do you respond to that? You know, I think I would have done the same thing two years ago. In fact, I did do the same thing two years ago. In I wrote terms a, of judging? In yeah. terms of judging, I wrote a column where I criticized somebody who had done the same yeah. thing. And so I understand where the criticism comes from because, of course, this is not the outcome that anybody would hope for. But ultimately, we had to do what was best for the child. And so I hoped it would have been us, but working with the support that we had, that was the conclusion we came and to. And real, real quickly, how is baby D doing? You've checked he's in. He's doing well. He's doing well. Which I guess is the happy family. ending in all this, so even though it seems like a difficult path to get there. Anita, thanks very much. Thank Adam, you. thank you. Lisa, thank you very much. We appreciate it. We want to know what you think about Anita's decision and this story in general. We'd like your comments. Log on to our website at todayshow.com to weigh in, and we'll be talking about that in a later program.